أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to my Ramadan series, Understanding Quran with Nafisa. Guys, 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 if you are appreciating and loving this Ramadan series, please make sure you give this video a thumbs up and also share it with another sister or brother who may benefit from the content of today's video. Okay, so we are on verse 108 of Surah An Nisa. We are moving along quite swiftly. I hope you guys are loving it. So, I will read the verses as per usual and then I'll come back and give my commentary on it. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they try to hide their deception from, from people, but they can never hide it from Allah, in whose, in whose presence they plot by night what is displeasing to him. And Allah is fully aware of what they do. Here you are, you believers are advocating for them in this life, but who will dare to advocate for them before Allah on the day of judgment, or who will come to their defense? Whoever commits evil or wrongs themselves, then seeks Allah's forgiveness, will certainly find Allah all forgiving most merciful. And whoever commits a sin, it is only to their own loss. Allah is all knowing, all wise. And whoever commits an evil or sinful deed, then blames it on an innocent person. Hmm. They will definitely bear the guilt of slander and blatant sin. Had it not been for Allah's grace and mercy, a group of them would have sought to deceive you, O Prophet. Yet they would deceive none but themselves, nor can they harm you in the least. Allah has revealed to you the book and wisdom and taught you what you never knew. Great indeed is Allah's favor upon you. There is no good in most of their secret talks except those encouraging charity, kindness or reconciliation between people. And whoever does this seeking Allah's pleasure, we will grant them a great reward. And whoever defies the message after guidance has come clear to them and follows a path other than that of the believers, we will let them pursue what they have chosen, then burn them in hell. What an evil end. Surely Allah does not forgive associating others with him in worship, but forgives anything else of whoever he wills. Indeed, whoever associates others with Allah has clearly gone far astray. They try to hide their deception from people, but they can never hide it from Allah. Again, we're talking about the hypocrites who do something in secret, but then in public, they're acting like they're they are the best of people. These people will have one of the deepest place in the hellfire. Then in the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, here you are, you believers, advocating for them in this life. But who will dare to advocate for them before Allah on the day of judgment? Like I'm, I'm, I am read this verse and I'm scared. Allah says, you believers, believers, you're advocating for these people who are insistent upon disobeying Allah. You're advocating for them. And Allah says, which one of you will dare to advocate for them on the day of judgment? Some of us, because we don't, we can't see Allah in this life because he is just giving us the time to do what we want. We think that it's okay to overstep the boundaries of Allah. But Allah is saying to us on the day of judgment, when the veil is lifted and we've really come to reality with things, when we've realized that this life was the actual joke and the hereafter is actually the real life. When the calling comes for us to rise from our graves and we all rise from our graves, and we walk towards where we're going to be judged fully naked. Fully naked as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us. When we walk there and then we stand waiting to be judged. Sweating and drenching in our sweats according to our evil deeds. And some of us are drowning in our own sweat because of how much sin we've committed. We're not yet being punished in the hellfire. We are simply just waiting to be judged. Allah says on that day, who will dare, 
Who will dare to do what? To advocate for these disbelievers and for these evil people who deceive others, who will dare to advocate for them before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Which one of you is going to be brave enough to try that? The bottom line is, do not advocate for people who do wrong. Don't support those who do wrong. Don't support the wrongdoers. It is not good and Allah does not like it. Because how can you support the wrongdoers unless you yourself are a wrongdoer? May Allah protect us from that. So Allah says, or who will come to their defense? Which one of you is going to come to their defense on the day of judgment? None of us. None of us. You know, they say that the friendship that will benefit you on the day of judgment is the friendships that brought you closer to Allah. That every other friend is going to become the enemy of their friends on the day of judgment. Why is that? Because it's nafsi, nafsi on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment, everybody's thinking about themselves. Everybody's thinking about themselves. Your mother would want for you to take a sin so that she does not have to fall into the hellfire. Yes, your mom who loves you so much, she's not going to want to take her sin. If she has an opportunity to take some of her sins and dump it on you, she would do it. In this life, mothers sacrifice so much. But you see, on the day of judgment, again, when the veil is lifted and we're faced with reality and we can see that that is where the hellfire is, Everybody will be concerned about themselves. Everybody will be concerned about their soul. Don't tell me I'm your friend. I don't know you. <coughs> I don't know you. When you were in this life, you should have gathered your good deeds. Don't come to me and beg me for some of my light. I'm not going to give it to you. Yes, I loved you so much. Oh, my dear husband, I loved you so much. Oh, my dear wife, in this dunya, I loved you so much. But you see, on the day of judgment, I don't know you. Until I get to heaven, I don't know you. It is nafsi, nafsi. Every single human being is going to be selfish. Selfish in the way you probably have never known on the day of judgment. Until we are judged. And until, by Allah's permission, some of us make it to Jannah. It is after you make it to Jannah that if Allah permits for you to remember, you may remember your family members. And if Allah makes you of the category of people who can save others from the hellfire, then Allah will give you permission to do that. But that is after and only after you have entered into Jannah. Every single person is going to be way too scared to stand before Allah and advocate for anyone who did wrong. Your friend who followed you to do evil, whom you were laughing and joking with and it was all cool in this life, you will say it was that friend's fault. That friend will say it was your fault and Allah will say all of you to hell. All of you to hell. So we should think about our friendships and people that we keep company with. Are they people who are going to help us come close to Allah or are they people who are going to help us to enter into the hellfire? Some friends are not friends, they are enemies. Enemies of yours. Enemies of your souls. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from friendships that bring no benefit. So Allah says, who will come to their defense? Who can challenge me on that day? Let me see. Even the prophets are, guys, even the prophets are going to be too scared to come to Allah. We will be waiting for many years. And when I say years, they're not the same type of years in this life. We will be waiting for many years for us to be judged. And people are going to start complaining like, can somebody go and beg Allah so he can actually start the judgment? We've been waiting for so long. Some of us are drenching in our sweat. Some of us are already in pain and we haven't even been judged yet. So they will go to different prophets and ask all of them, please go and ask Allah to begin the day of judgment. You know what most of them will say? I'm sorry, I, I can't go to Allah because I remember one time I did this, that and that. I remember one time, time Allah had to correct me about this, that and that. So they will go through all of the prophets. None of them, none of them will agree to go and ask Allah, Allah, please, we're waiting. Can you start the day of judgment? None of them will go. Except who? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The final and the seal of all prophets. He, he's the only one that will be able to plead with Allah to begin the day of judgment for us. That's how serious this thing is. So when Allah says here, 
You may advocate for them in this life, but which one of you dares to advocate for them on the day of judgment? The answer is none of us. So Allah continues to say, whoever commits evil or wrongs themselves, then seeks Allah's forgiveness will certainly find Allah most what? Forgiving, most merciful. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Most merciful that they seek forgiveness. You know the interesting thing? Whenever Allah talks about us doing wrong, he says, we offended ourselves. It is never an offense to Allah that you would disobey him, that we would disobey him. Allah doesn't care if we disobey him. It doesn't, it doesn't reduce in his glory in any shape or in any way, shape or form. It doesn't reduce anything. The only thing it does is it brings harm to ourselves. So that is why Allah says when they commit evil against themselves, Sometimes we do wrong thinking we're hurting somebody else. Yes, I'm going to get her. I'm going to show her. I'm going to do this to her life. I'm going to do that evil to her life. I'm going to go and do this evil deed, do that black magic, spread gossip about her. I'm going to defame her, her image with others. I'm going to destroy her marriage. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. And we think that we are harming the other person. Oh, believe me, that other person may go through a challenge in this life. But if they can handle it with sabr and trust in Allah, Allah will have a far better plan for that individual. And in fact, what can happen is the one who is plotting does not know that they are elevating the one that they are hurting. How? Because on the day of judgment, Allah will take any good that the one who, who's doing the evil... Any good that that individual has, Allah will take all the good and give it to the people that they harmed. So if I decide I'm going to harm somebody, Allah will take all of my good deed, go and give it to that person and I may find myself bankrupt. And if I don't have any good deeds and I'm an evil doer, what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the person that I harm or the people that I've harmed, Allah will take all of their bad deeds and drop it on my scale. That person walks to Jannah and my place is where? That is justice. There is no justice in this life, but there is certainly justice on the day of judgment. That is why it's called the day of judgment, the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge us. So when we commit evil, it is against our soul. We just don't realize it. In this life, it looks like we're getting away with it. Who are you? I can do what I, whatever I want to you. And what are you going to do about it? You don't realize you are creating a battle between yourself and Allah. Because that person may not be able to do anything to you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fight their battle. Most of the time, the evil that we do, it hits us in this life before the next. 20 years later, 30 years later, you're suffering. You don't know why. Because you've been harming other people. That's why you're suffering. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. But after all of that, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always brings us the reminder, he says, if they seek forgiveness from Allah, they will find Allah forgiving, most merciful. But the forgiveness has to be sincere. You have to mean it. You have to mean it. You have to ask Allah for forgiveness. You have to acknowledge that what you did was wrong. You see, there are conditions of tawbah. And this is why people harm other people and they think it's actually okay. And they're like, well, sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry. And then they just carry on the way they've always carried on. Same attitude, same behavior. They just say, sorry. That is not seeking forgiveness. Seeking forgiveness is that you first and foremost acknowledge that what you did was wrong. And a lot of us, our, our ego cannot allow us to actually acknowledge that what we do to others is wrong. Or that what we're doing against ourselves by committing sins and not following Allah's path, we don't even acknowledge that we have wronged ourselves by doing that. We don't acknowledge that we have disobeyed Allah. We don't want to acknowledge that. But again, if we choose not to, it is against ourselves. And so acknowledgement is important in that process. Then you have to admit that what you did was wrong. I'm talking about the conditions of Tawbah. You have to admit that what you did was wrong. Then you have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely, like really regretting it, that you're sorry. You actually, there has to be a, a deep regret for it to say, how could I have really done that? That was really, really wrong. And so you beg Allah to forgive you. And if there is that evil that you're doing, you have to stop it. You can't say I did tawbah. 
and you're just carrying on the sin. That's not a sincere tawbah. If that was a sincere tawbah, you would not continue the sin. So you try your best to stop it. And if there is anything in your environment that's facilitating the sin, you leave that environment or you disassociate yourself with all the things that facilitates that sin. If it's an app on your phone, you get rid of it. If you're joining dodgy websites and doing dodgy stuff, you cut yourself away from all of that. All of that shows that you have sincerely repented. And Allah says, if you're able to do that, that he will welcome you. And Allah is ever most gracious, most merciful. And so verse 11, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and whoever commits a sin, it is only to their own loss. Allah is all knowing, all wise. Allahu Akbar. And whoever commits an evil or sinful deed, then blames it on an innocent person to crown it all off. You commit a sin and then you want to blame it on an innocent person who has nothing to do with it. Allah say, said, Allah says that this individual, they will definitely, definitely, there is no yes, maybe. Allah said they will definitely bear the guilt of slander and blatant sin. So they've committed two types of sin. They have... The sin for slander and slander is when you, you, you say somebody did something that they did not, right? You accuse someone of something that they have not done. That is slander and also a blatant sin because obviously doing that is a sin. So Allah says that they will bear guilty. You know, on the day of judgment, some of us are thinking, I can come up with something. Maybe I can tell Allah that it was this reason, that reason. I can create an excuse for what I did. That's not how it works. On the day of judgment, we will speak the truth whether we want to speak it or we don't. The, the, the thing of choice and free will was for this life. Once you're dead, you no longer have free will and you no longer have choice. Your body parts will bear witness against the sin that you used to do. So if, if we used to commit zina and we don't want to admit that we were committing zina and we don't repent from it, we just carry on. You're married, who cares? You have all these side chicks and side hens and all of this, whatever. You have an extra boyfriend on top of your husband and whatever. You will not be able to come on the day of judgment and cook up a story and make up an excuse because your mouth will automatically tell the truth. And then your private part will bear witness against you. So if you said, I didn't go to that place, your feet will talk. Your feet will bear witness against you. Your feet will say, you did. You used me to go, X, y, to go to X, Y, and Z. And Allah is able to do all things. Yet despite all of that, Allah says, had it not been for Allah's grace and mercy, a group of them would have sought to deceive you, O Prophet wasallam. Yet they would deceive none but themselves, nor can they harm you in the least. Allah has revealed to you the book and wisdom and taught you what you never knew. Allahu Akbar. Grace indeed is Allah's favor upon you. And grace indeed is the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. The Quran is a gift to us. It is a gift. It is a gift. Allah helps us to see what we should be doing, what we shouldn't be doing. Yes, we are all imperfect, including myself right here, sitting here, giving this lecture to you. This is first an advice for myself before it is to all of you. And I make it a point to remind myself all of the time because I am not excluded from the advice that I give to you. I am included in the advice that I give to you. Sometimes after filming this, these videos, I just kind of ponder upon these verses. I ponder upon it. And, and I can't say that I am 100% on all of this. So there is so much room for improvement, so much room for improvement. But the fact that we are Muslims and the fact that we're here, we make time to remember Allah. I want you to know that Allah is ever appreciative of it. Ever appreciative of it. And above all, your soul is going to be so grateful that you are doing this for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our efforts in his cause. Amen.